Welcome to my channel. This tutorial is for a mid-sized mum. I'm going to show you how I did all three braids and chains along with making a bow, uh, attaching custom cutout, ribbon necklace, ribbon streamers. Uh, I'm going to show you how I made the backer, how I made tinsel puffs on a uh, deco mesh tubing. So there's going to be lots of good stuff in this tutorial. I hope you like it and I hope you give it a thumbs up. For my mid-sized mums, I usually do a five to five and a half inch backer. This is a hand cut backer. I'm using recycled chipboard. And then for the ribbon streamers, I cut them at, well, I don't cut them at 15 inches. I want my ribbon streamers to be 15 inches long from the bottom of the backer. So I cut them um, about two inches longer. An inch a lot of times is not quite long enough. So I usually give it about two inches two extra inches, an inch and a half to two extra inches. And then um, I also like to start at the very bottom or middle, of course, the bottom of the backer, but the middle of the backer and then work uh, right and left from there. And I also like to overlap my ribbons. Overlapping your ribbons is gonna make sure that you don't have any gaps in those ribbons. It's gonna make it look nice and full. Uh, you won't have to use a ton of layers because it is gonna look nice and full and it won't be near as heavy. Now midsize, it, I'm calling it that. Uh, that's just something I came up with, but I, I had a customer that didn't want a full size garter and um, but they didn't want a peewee garter either. So I came up with this size uh, to um, just give them something in between, which is what I called it at the beginning in between size. So it is um, a little bit more of a money saver. It's like getting a full size, you know, getting all, you know, more braids and chains and more stuff with the full size, uh, either an 18 inch mum or 18 inch garter, but uh, it is saving them some money because it's shorter. It doesn't have as much stuff on it, but it has way more than a peewee or a mini does. So it's been a really great option and it's been really popular on my Etsy shop along with uh, some of my customers, my local customers really enjoy it. And actually one of my local customers is the one that um, is the very first one that I made one for. So again, I have 15 inches from the bottom of the backer. I did a the white ribbons and then I did the pretty gold sparkling ribbon those were all two and a half inch width and then I did the hunter green which is the number nine or the 1.3 inch or the one of five sixteenths inch they're all they're known as all three of those depends on the stores you shop at and then I did this really wide honeycomb which has like a holographic look to it I think it's like three inches or three and a half and then the gold um, organza or sheer that was on a big roll and I think that came from Sam's if I'm not mistaking. It's a wired ribbon so I removed the wire so they'll flow naturally. This ribbon in the middle is actually from Dollar Tree Christmas time. It has no wires in it. it. Just adds some fun metallic and sparkle to it. You can see I added some other gold glitter ribbons. Some of those are from Hobby Lobby. Um, I'm adding cord and twine. Um, different kinds of strings like that metallic looking pretty strings to attach the bells and trinkets. There's a black soft satin, the very thinnest soft satin you can buy. So I'm just stapling and gluing those on. I'm always scared those will pull out those really, really little ribbons. So I always add some hot glue to those as well. And I'm just randomly placing those. I Sometimes I don't do that until I'm ready to attach trinkets and sometimes I do it before. It just depends on my mood. This is a good brand of ribbon, but it actually came from Dollar Tree. And it's a grow grain ribbon. And that's what I'm going to use to attach not only the loop for pinning it on, but also for the ribbon necklace. I'm giving them both options. Some customers don't know what the girl wants to wear, um, or maybe they just want to have two options. So if I don't know, if I don't get an answer, I'll go ahead and attach both just to be safe so they have both options. So just a simple loop for pinning it on. I like to make it a little bit oversized because if you make it too small then how are they going to find it? It's going to be really difficult for them to pin on. Now for the necklace and this is one version of my ribbon necklaces. I do different versions and this I'm going to make a loop that was about eight inches and I think this is a soft satin. Yeah. So making an a loop on this side but you can see the loop is going a different direction than the pin on loop 
Again, I'm gluing and stapling all of that on. Now you take that long piece of ribbon and you can do about 24 inches or a little bit longer, but I wouldn't go much shorter than that. You just run that through that black loop and you pin it together. You can use a pretty straight pin too. A lot of times I'll give them both just to decide which one they want. What I really like about this necklace is it is adjustable, which is great. Now for the first chain, we're doing a layered loop chain. I'm calling it a layered loop chain because you're layering several different ribbons on top of each other, so layered. All right, this ribbon right here is not really ribbon. It is party streamers, metallic party streamers, and you can use that on Homecoming Mums. It's wonderful. You can buy it at Hobby Lobby. You can buy, it, buy them at Dollar Tree. They come in all different colors. It works great for the streamers. It works, it works great for loops, as you can see. So I've got a two and a half inch black, which is either luster or acetate. Then I have this gold streamer, which I think is about two inches wide. And then the hunter green is the uh, number nine or the one in five sixteenths. And there you go. And now those, uh, that will be perfect for putting a name on. And I'm matching them up, making sure that I'm making them all exactly the same. Now I'm taking this really pretty gold ribbon, this wired ribbon. It's a two and a half inch. And I'm going to cut it again a little longer than 15 inches. This is going to be the base of my chain. This is what I'm going to attach the loops to. I'm removing the wires again. I'm cutting a V shape on the bottom to make it really pretty. Now, this ribbon is metallic, like metallic, metallic. If I tried to heat seal the ends, I would just set it on fire. So I found some fingernail polish in my stash that is almost identical in color. So I'm just dabbing it along the edges to keep it from fraying. Now, I always like to lay out my loops and just see if they, you know, how I like them, which direction do I want them to go? Do I want them straight? Do I want them going uh, back and forth like this? how close together I want them. It always works best for me to lay them out first and then attach them. So I tried to get close up as I could. Now when you um, attach them like this where you can see the staples, you will have to go back and cover the staples in some way. I usually use bling, uh, especially if they wanted bling, but you can add bling to any mum as long as it's a girl's. And they do have some bling that's not like really blingish and you can use it on guys. It looks more like chrome or something. Or you could also make bows. Uh, you could use tinsel. There's so many different options on covering it up and it doesn't have to be anything expensive either. So this is just diamond mesh ribbon or diamond mesh wrap, whatever you call it. I call it ribbon because it comes on a spool. And then just glue, you can either glue the back side of the diamond mesh or you can glue onto your loop and put the diamond mesh on top of that. But you do have to be careful. Some ribbons will um, crinkle up as soon as hot glue touches them. So you need to be very careful about what kinds of ribbons you're using. I'm just going to cover each and every one of these up. That's going to cover all those staples and it's going to make it look really pretty and really sparkly. Give it a good finished look. And then I decided to put some on the bottom. So I really didn't have to do the fingernail polish thing. If you do this, this is going to keep it from fraying too, but I didn't know I was going to do that at the beginning. Super simple to do, and that's going in the center. It's a wide loop chain, so it's going to take up a good portion of space. And that is going to be for a name, so I wanted it right there in the center. And you can see the lights hitting this. You can see all the sparkle that is happening on this mum. That makes me so happy to see that. <laughs> now I'm going to attach some deco mesh 
flex tubing. This is gold. You can get this in so many different colors. You can buy it at different craft stores. You can buy it online. And my favorite place to buy it is Dollar Tree because it is the least expensive. They get so many different colors. There are other colors I wish they would get like royal blue that they don't, but maybe one day. Uh, the gold and silver is, you're going to find that mostly at Christmas time, so stock up then. Now for the six ribbon victory braid. A regular victory braid has four ribbons, so this has six, so it's going to be even wider and a little bit more, you know, extra. So I only did three braids and chains on this, but I did wide ones, so that's one of the reasons why. On my uh, midsize, I always do three to five, and it just depends on the mum. Okay, so you want to layer these ribbons like I'm doing, or weave these ribbons like I'm showing. And I did mess up at first. And how you know that you've got it right, you see that hunter green ribbon on the right that's going down to the right, the very furthest ribbon on the right, close to my hand. That ribbon needs to be on top. No, I don't care what color it is, that ribbon is the one you start with and it always has to be on top. So if it is not on top, then you do not have them started out correctly. Now you wanna make sure that you've got this ribbon just right. So it will crease along that ribbon and then right here, you wanna kinda of push that up right before you crease it, you wanna tuck it up in there. If it's not tucking up in there, right it next to that gold diamond, um, then you don't have them angled correctly. You have to have the ribbons angled correctly. You know, you've got some angled down to the left. You've got some angled to the right. You've got, there's a V in the center when you first start. You got to make sure that these are all angled correctly or they just won't fold right. So you need to restart it. So I always check those first ribbons to make sure that they're going to fold correctly. And you just want to fold just like I'm doing or weave the ribbons like I'm doing and you go back and forth from right to left. So I've got the right ribbon. I tuck it under all the ribbons except for the one on the very left. Then I go over and under that one and then you tuck it up so it's butts up against the one above it and then you'll give it a crease and I like to use that acrylic ruler. You want to make sure that you finished weaving the ribbons down there then now I'm on the left one and I go under all of them except for the one on the right and then I go over and under and then tuck that up. So again that goes over and under that ribbon and then don't forget to weave it in that last ribbon there. You crease that gold ribbon now the black one goes under all those except for the green one at the end and it goes over and under that one and then you weave it on that gold ribbon there. Since you're doing six ribbons you've got to do that extra weave. If you were only doing four ribbons you wouldn't have to do that. So every time you add two ribbons to this braid you're going to have more ribbons that you're going to have to weave after you do the, the over and under tuck and then just keep doing this until you get to the very end or you get your desired length. And I'm just going to keep going here as far as I can. One more. There, it seems like a lot of times when you make these kind of braids, you'll have a couple of ribbons that are really short and a couple that are really long at the end. I don't know why that happens. It just does. I am braiding that whole length. Sometimes you'll get just enough to make your braid. Now I'm going to tuck some of those behind and you have to staple these to get it to hold together. And since you've got all these, you got extra ribbons here, you've got to tuck it a couple, tuck a, more than two ribbons. You're going to have to tuck a few ribbons and do some stapling and it can be a little confusing. You want to try to make it as neat as possible on the back. So I'm just kind of folding those over on the back side giving that a staple and now I'm going to do those green ones so all I'm left with is two ribbons there on the end and of course you can finish this off however you want to staple it at the end 
If you have some, you know, a better idea for that, go ahead and do that. Carefully take off this tape because sometimes it'll pull on the ribbons. You see, I'm just tucking those on the back side, but you do have more staples to contend with when you do more than four ribbons for the Victory Braid. So if you do six or eight, or I'm sure you could do 10 or 12, but it would be ginormous. <laughs> So now I'm going to attach this on the left side of the mum. Like I said, I'm only doing three braids and chains on this mum, but you can tell that they are much wider, so they're taking up a lot of space. Now after you get a victory braid made, um, you can go through with some glitter ribbons or pattern ribbons, as long as they're the same size or smaller than the ribbons used on the victory braid, and you can weave those through to add some bling. And then you'll just have to glue the back side, glue the ends to the back side of the braid. But this is a great way to add some more dimension and to add some glitter or sparkle or to add some patterns. Now I'm just flipping it over so I can do the gluing. So you just glue those ends and fold it over so they won't come undone. Well, it's going to make it look neat too, but at, also you want to make sure that you know those don't slide out. Get make sure you get all sides and like this one I'm pulling it out and just adding a little touch of hot glue because it's going to slide around more than the other ones since it's so thin and then I'll have to re-tuck that into the black ribbon making sure I've got everything all glued in that was one more of those ribbons I weaved and I didn't see it at first now I'm going to tuck that in now that that hot glue is dried Okay, now for a twisted loop chain. So this honeycomb ribbon is going to be my background ribbon to attach the twisted loops to. Of course, it's going to be 15 inches long, um, but that ribbon is going to be cut a little bit longer to make sure that I have enough to fit on the backer. So here is how you twist your loops, and I'm doing this several times to show you. Just slowing that down. And then I like to make a point at the bottom with my twisted loop. See how it makes that nice point when you fit the, both the ends together. And not everybody does it that way, so you can do whatever you want. Now I'm going to do this a little bit faster. And I like to go ahead and form these, give them a staple, and then make your, you know, use them on your backer or your chain. Uh, this version of making the twisted loops is not my version. It is, I got that from Rhonda's Creative Corner. So she folds them a different way. And I think it's, you know, it's another way to show you how to do it if you don't like the way I do it. Uh, so I want to give her props for that because that is her version of them. She also gives them a little, uh, the ribbon a little curl at the end too. I'm not doing that on these, but I have shown that on other videos as well. So again, when I do a, any kind of loop chain, I like to lay down all my loops and just kind of see how do I want to attach them, how far apart, how close together, stuff like that. So as you can see, I'm kind of uh, putting the green ones close together and then I'm going to space out the gold ones a little bit more. I just want to give that one or two staples, two to be safe. And I do the first one kind of going one direction and then the second one is going the opposite, kind of the opposite direction. And I'm going to show you different angles so you can get a good look at it. You see where I make that point? Like the gold one is, the point is like facing me, but then on the next green one, the point is facing away from me. And again, now this green one is the point is facing at me again. So that's what I mean by, uh, you know, attaching them back and forth or one one direction and one the other direction. I'm quickly get these done. I, I love these twisted loop chains. I like to use twisted loops on backers. I just think it's a lot of fun. And this is flower deco mesh uh, ribbon or wrap, the flower shape. And I cut those into four and I'm going to glue those because you want to cover the staples if you can see the staples. And that's why I spaced them out because I wanted to add some bling. 
And another thing I like about the twisted loops is you can attach them on, you know, single, like a single line, or you can double them up and you can put a bunch of them. You can put them on however different directions you want to, and it'll make your chains look, each one will look completely different. So it's a lot of fun to work with, and you can still put stickers on those. Not like giant stickers, it would have to be small stickers, but it is another option. I have put stickers on those like, you know, words or names several, several times. So on those, I'm only doing two because you don't see those as much. So the ones where you could see more of the twisted loop, I did four, and then the ones you couldn't, I did uh, two. Now I'm going back with one more and, and attaching one right in the center of those four because you could actually still see the staple in that little space between the four. And now on the gold ones. So that made it look so blingy and it kind of also gave it like a 3D look, so it was really cute. Now this one's going on the right side. Again, you just want to staple that on. Super, super cute. And my stapler, this always happens um, with any of these staplers. Uh, a staple gets hung up and it's like partially out and you have to get like some needle nose pliers and just yank it out and then it'll work. So this is some gold Christmas tinsel. I love to use this stuff. You guys know I do, unless you're new to my channel. And I'm just folding it in a circle and then I'm gonna give it a twist. And that just makes a little tinsel puff. So it can be like fireworks or it can be a pom-pom. It can be whatever you want it to be. A little explosion. So this you have to be very, very careful because you can burn yourself very easily. And I used to do this without the finger protectors. So I just put some glue, kind of wrap glue inside that tubing, and then I place that tinsel puff kind of inside there and squish it down. It's hard to explain, but I hope you can tell what I'm doing by looking at it. And that just makes these fun little, uh, I don't know what you want to even call it, these little fun streamers out of the deco mesh tubing with a little pom-pom or explosion coming off the end. So I'm going to do several of those on here. I think I did a total of four. Let me just kind of squish that around the hot glue. Again, be so, so careful because that hot glue comes, that deco mesh tubing is not a solid material, so the hot glue will kind of work its way through there. Now we're going to work on the backer. And I've already got a most of the loops made. I'm just going to show you the last of the loops. Again, I'm using that metallic streamer, so I want to show that again. And the two and a half inch black. Layer that on there. And now the 1.3 inch or 1 and 5 sixteenths inch hunter green. And I'm angling that one. I like to angle the ribbon on these loops for the backers. I think it's it's just a fun little twist to do. I've seen other people start to pick that up. Instead of doing doing them all straight like the ones I'm doing now, it just gives it something a little different and unique. So these are the 5 sixteenths, or 9 sixteenths, I'm sorry, 9 sixteenths, the 7 eighths, and the 1.3 inch, or 1 and 5 sixteenths inch. So number 9, number 5, and number 3. Just layer those, and I'm centering them. That's a classic loop right there. Okay, so now I'm going to do some little ribbon spikes out of this metallic streamer. So you want to cut those at half the length. So I'm cutting them about two and a half inches. And my ribbons uh, for the loops, I'm sorry, I cut those at five inches. Uh, you can cut them at six inches. Just depends on how big you want your loops to be. But I wouldn't go any smaller than five inches for that size of five five and a half inch flower, five and a half inch or five inch backer. But if you're doing a full size mum, I would I would go with six inches. So I'm taking my backer and I'm taking this little spool of ribbon and I'm just going to mark a circle around it on the inside. Try to center it. And this is just going to give me a guide on where to attach the loops. So I'm attaching them evenly on the backer and the spikes. 
So I'm going to start out with those spikes. Since I did four, I'm going to do it in a north, south, east, and west pattern. That just helps me get them straight and even. If you're just attaching them all over the place, then don't worry about it. If you're attaching three or five or an odd amount or six even, I, you know, you could do like, if you're doing six, you could do north and south and then do two in between the north and south. But if you want like a, a backer that's kind of cohesive and everything, then, you know, I suggest doing the line like I did or the circle like I did, giving yourself a guide and then do like north, south, east and west. And I have different, I have different backer tutorials if you want some other versions of, you know, some I do like in groups of three instead of groups of four like this, or just randomly placing all different size ribbons on there. You, you can do that too. There's so many things you can do with a, with a backer. So I'm going between the spikes and just try to even, you know, evenly space them between the two spikes. Or I'm sorry, the four spikes. <laughs> Give those a couple of staples. Now we can do the smaller loops. I, I always start out with the biggest loops first and then work my way each layer with the smaller and smaller loops. And it gets more and more difficult to get in there with that stapler every time. And so I'm going between, again, between the big loops on top of those spikes. the last two so this is gonna be right now it looks like a really nice classic uh, backer and I'm gonna add a little bit more glitter ribbon to this or a little bit more some glitter ribbon because the only thing I had on there was that metallic it was the only sparkly thing so I'm just kind of making I don't know you want to call these spikes or what just going between those loops and gluing is the easiest option here because getting in there with the stapler is getting more and more difficult so I'm doing four of these now I'm taking well I'm going to trim those off first and I did make them a little long but I thought they looked cute like that it just gave it a little something different now I'm doing the same thing with this black Now it's not so classic. It's got a little something different to it. Don't be afraid to try new things and experiment with your backers or any part of your mom, actually. So since I'm using chipboard, I had to make a circle in there or a hole in there. Now this is a little something different I did. Uh, I took that deco mesh tubing and just twisted two pieces together. Or I actually folded it on itself and then twisted it. Now I'm going to wrap a Chanel stem around it to hold it in place. So I made a loop. You know, I've made loops many times with these, but n I've never like twisted the, the deco mesh tubing like that before to give it just something fun and different. Now I am going to work, try to get in there with the stapler and staple that down. You can glue those down too. You see how, tr how much trouble that is. And you got to be careful. You got to watch what you're stapling because you could uh, staple something you don't want to staple. So I'm doing another one just like it on the opposite side. And I like to keep my flower close by and put it in the, on the backer and just kind of see how is it looking? Does it need anything else? You know, that kind of thing. And I'm going to do something uh, different again. I'm taking three pieces of this deco mesh tubing and I'm going to attach one end together with the Chanel stem again. Wrap it really tight so it holds them together. Now I'm going to braid these. So I never did that either. Since I twisted two together I thought why, why not braid some and see how those look as well. So this one was definitely different. I, I didn't, I hadn't done anything like that before. Gave it just a little something different again. And you want to secure that end as well so it doesn't come undone. You don't want to be fighting something coming undone while you're trying to staple it onto a backer. And a lot of times after I staple these, I'll go ahead and add some glue on the end too, just to give it some extra security. So again, I'm doing one more of these. Fast forward this because you saw it once. You don't necessarily have to see it again. And doing it on that end. It kind of looks like a four-leaf clover to me now. 
before you put the flower on it. Now I'm going to add a, a little bit more glitter ribbon. This is going to go in the center of those white loops right on top of that green ribbon. And I just kind of measured out how much I needed to cover that green ribbon. And this is one of those really thin ribbons. I can't remember what the width is, but it's uh, from Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. Usually where they have like the crafts and maybe some gift wrapping stuff. But that fits over the 9 sixteenths and still shows a little bit of the 9 sixteenths. So it's got to be thinner than that. Now let's try that flower and it looks really good. So now there's some bling on it. There's some fun stuff. I want to secure that Chanel stem by stapling it down. And then I'm hot gluing under the flower. I'm hot gluing it to the backer. That's some extra, some more security on the flower, keeping it in place. Plus you don't want them, you know, the flower to like move in them to see that, see the staples and stuff underneath. So I added these ribbons, one on each side. That is just the 1.3 inch acetate with some white vinyl. So I did freshman on one side and then the mascot on the other side. That gave me some more options for attaching or for putting, you know, more information, personalizing it is what I'm trying to say. Plus the sports ball stickers. Now I'm attaching the back, the two backers to get together, the two sections together. So I always give it two staples at the top like you saw me do. That way I know that they're perfectly lined up. The backer is uh, exactly where I want it to be. And now I glue the sections together. And now I'm going around and stapling all around the two backers. Because you want those two backers to be really tight together. You don't want any gaps, so try to get in there as good as you can with the stapler on all the way around and try to get it in, into the center as much as you can either. You want Again, you want those two backers to be really, really tight together. And now I've got a clean backer for the very, very end. Just flip that over and hold that down. And now uh, I used to like pinch it all around and try to hold it, so now I take these clamps and clamp it all the way around and then like those are alligator clips you can kind of fit them under there and that's holding the backers together until the glue sets so I won't have to worry about any gaps again so now that it's set pulling those off looking for any gaps here is the custom cutout I made for the flower little golf uh, silhouette and I did it in two layers so I'm just gonna hot glue that on right in the center of the flower now if you take like a stapler or scissors or something and just let it hold it down just for a minute and let that glue kind of set a little bit so it's not so hot and then you can kind of pinch the petals underneath after the glue is cooled down and uh, make sure it's on there really really well. I don't like to bend, bend my custom cutouts. I like to attach them flat otherwise the pieces, the layers may separate. Okay, now for a double layer bow that's 32 inches long. If you didn't catch that, I'm removing the wires from this wired ribbon. It's a one and a half inch width. Now I'm making a loop. I'm just holding that in the center. I left a little tail. Now I'm going to wrap that around. Make another loop on the opposite side. And then you wrap this loop under and then over. And that makes a very cute bow, very simple bow. It's got four loops and two tails. And I just clipped that in the center to hold it in place. Now for the same thing with this gold, it's the same kind of ribbon. It's an organza or a sheer. I think both of these came from Hobby Lobby. And sometimes, you know, you have too much of a tail on one side. And you kind of have to adjust it. Just keep pulling on those loops to get it the perfect size. And then you just gather it or pinch it in the center and gather. And I'm going to do the second one. You may have to attach something to the center on both of these and then attach them together if you can't pinch them both at the same time. And this is just a, a little button you get from the sewing or the scrapbooking section. Run a tinsel or I'm sorry, run a Chanel stem through the button 
and then just tie it around the center of your bow. It's so cute. It adds a little something fun to the center of your bows. And I like these double layer bows too. I think they look really cute. And you want to trim off those ends. You can just cut them at an angle or you can cut a V shape, whichever one you want to do. I just cut it an angle on these. And I'm only touching the corners of those ribbons or the edges. I'm not going over the center of the ends of those ribbons. It would melt if I got close enough with that um, lighter. So it's just like barely touching the corners, corner edges. So I decided to put it right here on the six ribbon victory braid and I moved that ribbon up out of the way so I wouldn't mess it up. And I am just going to staple that Chanel stem to the Victory Braid. You're more than welcome to glue that wherever you want it. Uh, by stapling it, if something happens and I decide I need to move it, um, it very easily can be removed without messing anything up. Now that one I forgot to add a button to beforehand, so I just cut off the back of the button and hot glued it to the center. So you can do the buttons either way, but I think running the Chanel stem through the button is the best way because it's it's not going to fall off that way. If you hot glue it on, you do take that chance of it falling off later. <clears throat> okay, here it is finished. So I've got it outside on my mannequin showing a little video so you guys can see the entire thing finished and you can see a close-up you can really get a good look at it when you take them outside and get some good photos and videos of them so here's that freshman with the volleyball and, and basketball I think that's a great way to personalize it all you have to do is you know a ribbon with some stickers if you have a way to make your own vinyl stickers that's awesome you can do so much with that see like I've got a golf club on there I cut that out myself but there are a lot of scrapbooking stickers that are uh, available as well so there's some more sports stickers uh, there's a uh, sublimated, sublimated dog tag that I made for him with all three sports so that was something unique and fun and personalized for them there's all these little trinkets there's my little pom-poms I see a bell with just some glitter ribbon. Very easy to do stuff like that. See how pretty the loops turned out. Very sparkly, very shiny. I think it turned out really, really well. I used white permanent vinyl for the stickers. So more than likely, none of the stickers will fall off, but you just never know. When you're shipping mums, you just never, never know, um, you know, because of the heat and being in a box it you know it's it's scary I've only had two instances where one like one letter came off and one was the mom they'd already had the mom for a few weeks and she was letting the child wear it over and over again so I don't think that one was my fault uh, the second one one letter did fall off and she's like oh I glued it back on it's no big deal so out of all the moms that I've shipped having two only having two issues with stickers I think that's really really good there's some more of the trinkets. I think this one had quite a few trinkets because they were into so many sports. So, you know, if they're not into a lot of sports, it kind of limits what you can do. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. That really, really helps me out. If you can share this video with people, that helps me out as well. I appreciate y'all. Uh, so so much if you can leave me a kind comment I'd appreciate it too or request for anything you'd like to see but if you're rude I'm just going to tell you I'm going to go ahead and block you I'm not even going to pay attention to you you're going to be blocked and you won't be able to see anything from my channel again uh, some links are going to pop up so click on those if you want to see those videos or subscribe to my channel thank you happy mum making